Good morning and welcome to Mombasa. I arrived here from Nairobi just a day ago and I'm ready to start exploring here from my Airbnb, which I have a room in this beautiful house on the Nyali side of Mombasa. Over there is old Mombasa and the central part, you can see the famous Fort Jesus from here. There's also a nice pier, which I think I'm gonna head to for sunset later. I'll also show you the Airbnb maybe as I walk through it because it's so nice. When I come back after taking an Uber across to the old part of Mombasa this morning to wander through the vibrant Swahili streets. Mombasa is a very historical port, a fusion of Indian and Arabic influences as well as East African culture merged into one cuisine wise, architecture wise, history wise. Uh, there's a lot to get stuck into here in Kenya's second largest city. Got some friends here in the trees. I think they're called vervet monkeys. There was also a strange looking cat creature that I saw last night. Uh, I took a quick video on my phone of it. It's got a very long tail and a sort of mousy or bear looking face and they run very fast. <laughs> so lots of wildlife just in front of where I'm staying. So I've just been dropped off by my Uber here by Fort Jesus. It came to 400 Kenyan shillings, which is around two pounds 60. I'm going to take a look inside the fort and then probably head down this way towards the spice market and historical center of old Mombasa, which has a lot of history. But first, let's pay a visit to one of Kenya's UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So I'm now here inside Fort Jesus and the ticket price was 1,200 Kenyan shillings, which is around just over seven pounds. And this place built in the 16th century by the Portuguese in 1593. It was kind of their way of saying we're staying here for the long haul. And it changed hands nine times until it was eventually turned into the museum that it is today. The Omanis, the Arabs, certain sieges were held here to get rid of the Portuguese. And then eventually it was turned into a prison by the British. This is an example of an Omani door, which can be seen all along the Swahili coast, down to Tanzania as well. Common in the coastal area. Some more Omani doors in a fort built by the Portuguese, once controlled later by the British in East Africa, a passing of control from one occupying force to the other until Kenya got its independence in 1963. From here, we should be able to see across once again and maybe even spot my Airbnb. The view from the famous Fort Jesus of Mombasa, looking out at all the passing trade that would have come through here ivory, spices, slaves. And 
and that pillar right there is directly in front of my Airbnb so yeah I can see it my garden <laughs> from here in this room quite interestingly some old Portuguese wall paintings some of which depict the conversion to Christianity as well as lots of ships possibly to show the military might and various fish as well but these are very old and tell us a lot about Portuguese colonization not just for East Africa but perhaps places like Goa in India and Brazil. Having just come out of Fort Jesus there, I am now walking through towards the interesting streets full of history in Old Mombasa. Apparently this is where Queen Victoria used to stay but I'm not a hundred percent sure. We're gonna see a lot of old buildings as I wander through here. He wants me to film his souvenirs. Nice. Some shells. Staging. Yeah. Nice, nice. Wow, look at this. These wooden balconies. So Mombasa is much more hot and humid than Nairobi. I can see why the British chose the lush green hills of cool Nairobi as the capital city. And on the British, before I went in Fort Jesus, one of the people who wanted to guide me around, who I politely declined, he'd said that during the slave trade, towards the end of the slave trade, the British intercepted uh, some of the potential outgoings of illegal slaves here. Now, of course, the British did participate in slavery earlier on. This would have been their departure point, I'm afraid. And many of them were stolen from Kenya's interior. And this isn't just a story of Kenya, this is a story of Africa as a whole. But taking the subject of slavery only in Kenya, I believe up to 4 million were kidnapped between the 7th and 19th centuries by both Arab and Swahili traders. So it's a very dark part of the history, but an important one to remember. There are tuk-tuks here in the city, just like in India. That Indian influence is strong here. I'm very well, thank you. That even comes across in the food, dishes like biryani are uh, popular. Mandari Mosque. I also read that this is one of the oldest mosques in the city, but like other places in Kenya, non-Muslims are not allowed to enter. Even in Nairobi, non-Hindus can't enter the Hindu temple, so it's not just uh, Islam, it's all religions, I guess, that they're not letting anyone of another religion uh, enter. But correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just every mosque and Hindu temple I've tried to enter so far in Kenya. I've been told I can't. Approaching here what looks like a very interesting antiques shop. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Lots of items of different tribes, some paintings up there, tusks. So 
so this is a globe yeah. the lady tells me from 1578 yeah is it a portuguese and, style uh, it's a juice bomb. oh wow that is quite the uh, collector's item very nice Oh yeah. From 1492. Wow. Yes, Columbus. Mm. Yes. So here's the official old port of Mombasa just walking a little bit further up and another thing I want to just finish on about the slave trade because they are stats that I think people need to know fewer than one in five of those men women and children kidnapped from the African interior survived the march to the coast along with that thousands of boys were surgically turned into eunuchs so they could work in households and many of the young girls were sold to be concubines so lots of pretty grim stuff and all we can do is talk about it and try to make sure that people are aware of those sorts of numbers and what happened the fish market further down here which looks pretty interesting, if a little gritty. gave that guy who took me to the fish market a little bit of change of course he was going to ask for some I knew what the deal was usually when someone offers to take you around somewhere then you're gonna have to give some small change hi I'm good thank you Just as I was saying that, another person trying to show me around for a little bit of change. You can take people up on those offers if you want to and if you'll feel safer with someone next to you, but be prepared to hand over some cash afterwards. It's quite an interesting area now. You can see the vibe of the streets here in Mombasa, in the old part of town. A lot of the clothes the women are wearing are very colourful and it's an exciting area. A little bit of a time portal. You'll notice there's a lot of Muslims, of course that's the Omani and Arabic influence. Over 41% of Mombasa's population are Muslims. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. 
So I'm looking for the spice market. Some examples of the colorful threads on sale. Heading further up the street, hopefully I'll see some turmeric and cardamom soon. Vegetables and fruit stalls. Got some sugar cane. The beating heart of Mombasa in years gone by. These streets. So I haven't found the spice market yet, but I have found the city market, which oh, city looks market is there. very interesting. Thank you. It's okay, I'll look around by myself. Thank you. No, it's okay. Are you sure? Okay, okay, okay. Where you come from? British. It's okay. Maybe information this turmeric, tamarind. Tamarind. Yeah. yeah. This is truffle chili. Yeah. We have uh, three di different types of chili. We have mango chili, lamb chili, this is truffle chili. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, chili only. Hi. Thank you. I have spices. Dead I have turmeric, this black, black pepper, this black pepper, this turmeric kukuma, this is ginger powder, mm -hmm. I have this cumin powder, and this for pilau mix, five spices for pilau. Nice. This for chicken masala, and this for beef masala, for fish. Yeah. This Kenya curry. Okay. Kenya curry and this hot chili. Mm -hmm. Hot chili. This Kenya tea. And this cardamom for tea. It says here Bristol 1914. There you go. Home from home. Sorry. What is that? Coconut cake. Oh, okay, coconut cake. Just, that, okay. Just one for free. Thank you. I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm. Nice Where to meet you. Tell me. I'm British. British. From Britain. Yeah. This is Sulikan House. Built by British. I know. Okay. Now. First time to Mombasa. No. First time. Yeah. How is Mombasa now? Very good. Very good. I'm enjoying it. Are you sure it's good? Yes. You know yes. about spices? I do, yes. Another person just showed me a lot of spices. Okay. Yeah. Now, which spices you like? Hmm? Which spices you like? We have chai masala, two spices. I'm here. just looking, but okay. thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. A bit like the Maasai market in Nairobi, it's a little bit intense, so you will get everybody trying to show you around. You just have to keep saying no firmly and politely, and you'll be okay. Hello, Boa. Everyone you walk past calls Jambo at you, so just keep moving uh, if you don't want to stop every single time but it's quite an experience. The people are very friendly and they're always smiling. I've now found the section of the spice market outside that I was looking for, but I'm gonna continue that way. More stalls of things here. Bit of a traffic jam here. Nearly just got hit by a van. Wow, my life flashed before my eyes for a second there. 
don't know how I stayed so calm. Found the place I wanted to stop at and have some lunch and a drink. It's called Tarbush. It was recommended to me by a local. Here you can see some of the things. Fried fish, kebab, samosa, samosa, chapati. Chapati here is supposed to be different to chapati in India. And then they've also got shawarma here. Looks good. This is the inside. Here we are. Mutton biryani, which looks incredible. And tamarind juice to pair with. The manager or guy in charge. Not sure if he's the owner. Uh, came and sat here and uh, we had a little discussion and he concluded that the mutton biryani and the tamarind juice is the classic combination, the best combination to go for. So here we go. Now the key element is the sauce. I'm going to get stuck in with my hands here because that's how you do it. Is good. It's kind of got a very meaty, savory flavor to it. Uh, let's try the kachan bari on the side. Mm. Really good. The onions give it a bit of bite. The lemon juice is slight acidity, so it goes down easily. Big bit of mutton here. You can still see the steam coming off it, it's still very hot, but probably tender as well. Full of flavour, really soft meat to accompany it. If you like Indian food, then you're going to absolutely love Swahili food. Here I am burning my fingers on the biryani with my hands. And I just looked across the side of the restaurant and all the other families are using spoons and forks. So they probably think this, this foreigner is pretty wild. So I'm now back here in my Airbnb. This is the room I'm staying in. Apologies if it's a bit messy, which is 2,300 Kenyan shillings a night. The ensuite, a really good deal. Not really for the room, but like I said earlier, for everything that comes with the room and this very grand house, which it's situated in. Let me show you. Hello, Suki. So from here, you can see the views out, the swimming pool below, where I started this video, just down there. We'll head down now. I love the aesthetic. Books and old sort of antiques. So making my way down now and the sun is disappearing just behind Fort Jesus over there and as I said earlier the plan is to walk to this pier. While I walk I thought I would talk a little bit about how I reached Mombasa because I wanted to take the train but in the end, I decided to fly. How beautiful is this? Just because of the difficulty in getting a ticket 
There's a train called the Merdaka Express, if I pronounce that correctly, which goes from Nairobi to Mombasa. It's a Chinese built service and it is, you know, from the appearance, pretty decent. A thousand Kenyan shillings for a normal standard ticket and 3,000 for a first class ticket. And I wanted to vlog the journey and I love taking trains when I travel because I can show the country and I can gaze from my own eyes out the window and observe as I go past. I'm not sure if I've gone the right way. <laughs> Maybe I just need to keep following the edge of the beach here. We will see. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. How do I get to that pier? The Airbnb told me to be careful walking down here because a uh, French guy who stayed a week or so ago got stopped by a police officer and said, you're not allowed to be here. And then he had to pay money. They threatened to take his passport and detain him if he didn't. But don't be too scared. Not all Kenyan police are like that, I don't think. Maybe he just got a bad one. All right, I'm definitely not going the right way. So let's head back and see if I can find another way round. And so the only way to buy a ticket for the Merdaka Express was on M-Pesa. Now M-Pesa is a mobile payment service that is widely used in Kenya and I believe other East African countries and now that I'm in Kenya I tried to get M-Pesa to make my life more convenient but setting it up was really awkward and the fact that you could only pay with M-Pesa and not with Visa or even cash was a bit of a off-putting thing for me and so in the end I didn't have a lot of time to find someone Kenyan to go and sort it out for me. I just thought I'm going to book a flight. It's going to be easier. And it was more the principle of my frustration and not being able to purchase a ticket that I didn't want to give them the satisfaction. So yeah, I flew with Kenyan Airways and the flight was just one hour. So really easy. And it was only 10 pounds more expensive, 40 pounds, including checked luggage. Right. Let's see if I can figure out how to get to that pier. Okay, so there was definitely no way through the beach there to get to the pier. So I'm heading out the front, following the road, and then seeing if I can go around. Yeah, I cannot access that pier, I believe. But if I keep heading forward, I should be able to reach Another beach of some kind, looking good. Seems like I found an opening, the perfect place to finish off this video. Quite a lot of seaweed. There we are. So I'm now on the far left-hand side of that pier that I was originally aiming for. But there we go. The other side of the Mombasa port entrance. And this was once the gateway to East Africa during the years where ships were the only mode of transport across continents. And its significance is quite something considering Zhang He, Marco Polo, Ibn Battuta, all the famous explorers have all documented their travels in Mombasa at some point or another. One of the world's great historical trading cities. In the next video, I'm going to do a street food tour. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We'll be out in just a couple of days time and I will see you then.